Welcome to Go Get Great, the podcast for aspiring entrepreneurs and ambitious small business owners. I'm your host, Brittany, owner of Brittany Miller Socials and mother of three. Go Get Great is all about helping you make life and business work together. You'll learn about the fumbles that helped get me and my guests to where we are today so you don't have to make them. So come join the journey with Go Get Great. Welcome back to another episode of the Go Get Great podcast. I'm excited to be back today with another guest speaker, the owner of Desert Digital Ads Group, Carlene Kelsey. She helps entrepreneurs scale and grow their business using proven Facebook and Instagram ad strategies. So this is a topic you guys are so interested in. You ask me a lot of questions and you guys know that it's not my area of expertise. So I'm so excited to have someone who can actually talk to and answer some of the popular questions that I get. So she shares some absolutely incredible information in today's episode, including where to get started with Facebook ads for beginners, which I know myself, I learned a lot throughout the conversation. And she also shares her five secrets to help you maximize your return on investment from your Facebook ads, whether you've just recently started or you're looking to get started and you want to make sure your ad dollars go the furthest, this is going to be an episode that really helps you out. So stay tuned until the end. There's also an amazing freebie giveaway that she's got for you that you're going to want to download. You can find it in the show notes if you want to check it out even while you're listening. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right. Good morning and welcome to the Go Get Great podcast. I'm so excited for you to be here today. How are you doing? Doing well. Thanks for inviting me. It's great to be here. Yeah, well, I'm really excited for today's topic. Facebook ads is something that I get asked about a lot as a social media manager, and it's really not something that I focus on. I focus more on organic growth and the strategy behind social media, which in my personal opinion, and maybe I'm wrong, but is kind of the precursor to ads. I feel like you need a strong foundation for your business and often organic strategy pieces is kind of where it starts, which leads nicely into Facebook ads. So I'm really excited to kind of talk about what happens after some of my clients and the people that are listening maybe graduate from my services and want to kind of move on to the next step. And I think Facebook ads is where that's about. So before we dive into that, I'd love for you to just introduce yourself in your business in your own words, if you don't mind. Sure, absolutely. I'm Carlene Kelsey. I live in Arizona. I used to live on the East Coast, but the winters got to be just a little too much. Mm-hmm. And I said, nope, bye, gone. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here um, in Arizona. I have just me and my dog um, who I got during COVID. He was a rescue and everybody needed company. And um, he's a great little dog to have around. I started my business because I was downsized in corporate America. Mm. I was in a good management position in a travel company and had done travel all my life. So I was a travel account manager um, at one of the big, big travel companies. um, And it was time for them to reorg. And, you know, I knew better. They do it every year. Mm. And so I got caught up in that and had to sit back and say, okay, do I want to work for myself or do I want to go back and find another job? So I decided I was going to start a virtual assistant business and I did. And I did that for like 13, 14 years. I helped people with social media, with email marketing, with newsletters, with um, basic stuff, setting up freebies and getting, get their freebie ready so that they could start collecting email lists. Mm -hmm. Um, all of that good stuff. And then I moved into accepting a position with Facebook to do ads Mm -hmm. for people and help them strategize and optimize their ads for more of an impact to their business. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Fell in love with ads and fell in love with the strategy and how you get the algorithm to work with you instead of against you to get your ads seen by more people. So Mm -hmm. I've kind of morphed my business into ads. Um, I, when I moved to Arizona, renamed myself Desert Digital Ad Group, and I'm in the desert in Arizona outside of Phoenix. Nice. And um, I love helping all kinds of people with ads. Um, There's lots you can do with ads. And it's this big, scary, it was big and scary for me too. It's big and scary Mm -hmm. and it's complicated. For many people, but for Mm -hmm. me, I've got it all down into steps. It's not so complicated anymore. Mm -hmm. And you can teach people how to do it, or I can help them do it 
I can do it for them and just meet with them weekly and strategize. So I love ads. I think ads are a big opportunity that people are afraid of, or -hmm. people think that it's going to cost too much money, but it's not. You can compete with the big guys on Facebook ads if you're smart about it and you get some help because trying to do it on your own usually is not real successful. Mm. It can be, but usually not. You, you need some strategy and you need some organization around how you're going to approach ads. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the really big thing. I said, I talked to a lot of entrepreneurs and they're like, oh, I tried it and it didn't work. And I was like, Sure, but you could say the same about organic social media. You could say the same about a fitness routine. Just because you tried something, if you didn't get professional guidance to know what you're doing, of course you're not going to see the results from it, which is why I love talking to experts. So I know that you have um, five secrets to Facebook ads, proven strategies to maximize your ROI and profits, which we're going to talk about. But before we get that far, I think it would maybe be a good idea to kind of call out who's going to benefit from this information. And I'm wondering if you can talk to like, when is the right time for a business to start running ads for anyone that's listening to know whether this is for them or not? Yep. That's exactly what I have here. First is you have to be ready for Facebook ads. Amazing. And there are some parameters that if you follow the parameters, you'll have better success. It's mm. it's that simple. Mm-hmm. You really have to have um, a website or a landing page. You have to be a real business. You, you mm-hmm. have to have somewhere to send people so they can look you up because trust me, they will look you up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> and so you have to have a landing page or a website. You have to have a freebie or lead capture gift to give away so that you can start growing your list. One of the best pieces of advice I got in the very beginning of my journey was from a monster guru and she still is today, but I didn't follow her advice. Mm. She said, start building your list from day one. Mm. It took me 10 years to really begin building my list. So that is another reason why you got to have a freebie. You got to have a landing page. Mm -hmm. You got to have your profile set up on Facebook and a business page, and then you have to have your business manager. So everybody knows Facebook changes things all the time, but it's all structured now under the business manager. So you've got to have it set up properly so you can run your ads. Mm -hmm. Um, You should have the the pixel. It used to be called the meta pixel. I'm not really sure what it's called today, but you got to have the piece of code on your website that's going to capture who comes to your website. Mm-hmm. I call it still the metapixel. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got to understand the funnel that the Facebook funnel is three, three steps. It's awareness at the top of the funnel. People have mm-hmm. to be learn who you are. Then they move into the consideration stage. Well, oh, I've seen this before. I know who she is. And then they become a buyer. Then you move in to the actual conversion stage. Mm-hmm. A lot of people run into Facebook ads and say, I'm going to go straight to buy or I am going to <laughs> sell my stuff. Mm-hmm. I really wish it worked that way. It just doesn't. Mm-hmm. People have to know who you are. They have to trust you. They have to see you on video. They've got to know that you have the solution for them and you're a good match before they're going to become a customer. Mm-hmm. So those things all have to be worked out in advance and get you ready for Facebook ads. And you have to have a little bit of marketing income, marketing uh, budget that you can use to advertise. The ads are not free. There's different price points for different kinds of ads. We're going to talk about that here in a bit, Mm -hmm. but um, you know, you can do it inexpensively. You can do it successfully if you are prepared and plan you can't just jump in and run an ad and expect monstrous results because I I just fear you're going to be disappointed (laughs) (laughs) yep and you're right too everyone's like oh I've got a sale let me just hit boost post button and I'll throw you know 50 bucks behind it and I was like I'm not a Facebook ads expert, but I can pretty much guarantee you that that's not going to work because I see this so much. And I was like, okay, well, your ads are working. They're in front of me. I'm looking at it. But a lot of times people miss what I consider critical information on social media. So talking about who you are, what you do, 
who should pay attention and like why they should pay attention to this. And it's like, I have a 40% off sale. And I was like, that's swell, but I don't even know what you sell. So I'm not clicking. I don't know who you are. Right. Yeah. I don't know what you do. I don't know who you serve. I don't know who you are. You've got to follow that funnel. It's not like any, it's just like every other funnel, awareness, consideration, and then purchase, you know, become Mm -hmm. a customer. And it takes time. And the other big thing with Facebook is you test things. You mm-hmm. you think this is going to work because you think you know, you absolutely should know your audience who you're <laughs> trying to reach. Mm-hmm. You think you know them and you think it's going to work and you test it and you're not getting clicks or you're not getting video views or you're not, mm-hmm. nobody is, is interacting with your ads. So then you have to change it up and you have to be prepared to test what's going to work for you mm-hmm. and who who you want to see your ad. So Mm -hmm. it, it it takes time. If you don't know what you're doing, you should probably get some help. (laughs) And I think that people give up too quickly on Facebook ads. Those are my three things that I think happen sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think people give up too quickly on everything. We're in this like overnight mentality. If it doesn't happen while we're sleeping, it's not going to work. And I was like, that's not, that's not how anything works. You don't lose weight overnight. You might win the lottery overnight, but you got to be real freaking lucky for that. It was like businesses don't grow overnight and neither are Facebook ads going to be successful or not successful based on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you said the first step is to make sure that you're set up to actually support ads and get the results you want. What's the second secret? Um, the second secret is choose your right objective. So you okay. have lots to choose from when you get into the ads manager. And I'm not talking about boosting posts. That's another quick, easy way to do it. And Facebook makes a lot of money on that. You can get some traction on that. What, okay. what, but it, but it's not really the best way to, to do your ads. The best way is in Ads Manager and um, you choose the right objective. You have to put your thinking cap on. <laughs> what do you want people to do when they see your ad? That's mm-hmm. your objective. Do you want them to comment? Do you want them to like? That's engagement. Do you want them to um, watch a video? That's video views and engagement. Do you want them to click a link and go somewhere else? Mm -hmm. Or do you want them to fill out a form on Facebook, a lead form, a lead capture form? If you keep them on Facebook, the algorithm likes that. And the customer likes that too. The viewer likes that. If they're staying in one spot and they don't have to go someplace else. So choose the right objective is the first secret. Mm -hmm. Um, The second secret is make sure you use the right budget because Mm -hmm. for those sale type ads. It's the most expensive budget. And so that's why too, you have to gear yourself up to get to that level where you can afford to spend the kind of budget that is required to get people to purchase something. Right. You see my dog running around in the background. Um, Okay. I've got mine here too. (laughs) (laughs) So I have some, some guidelines on budgets. Um, Okay. So, but different objectives require different kinds of budgets to get the right traction. Okay. Um, Then you brainstorm your audience. You have to make sure you're getting to the right people that you want to see your ad. Mm -hmm. Audience is a really big part of it. Um, There's wide open audiences where all you pick is the country and you go out to everybody who lives in a particular country, but you can really get focused, narrowly focused down on zip codes Mm. on where they live on their likes on their dislikes of course you always put in their age um you can put in even how much money they make facebook has all this information on us whether we like it or not (laughs) Mm. and you can narrow down who sees your ad Mm -hmm. and that's important because I don't know. I'm I'm a big proponent of, you know, getting the audience right and start out maybe with broad as they purchase something or sign up for something. Then you've got some custom audiences you can work with. You've got an email list you can upload. There's a lot of things you can do in Facebook that people just don't have any clue about. Hmm. And so um, audience is real important. If you ad goes in front of somebody on Facebook who is not in the least bit interested in your service or product, it, it, it go you you get nothing from it. You mm-hmm. you just get nothing from it. So audience is real important. 
Um, what else do I have? Consider where you're going to place your ad. So do you want it on Facebook and Instagram? Are you only going to do your ad for Instagram and you're going to maybe test it against your Facebook audience? And I, I recommend that. Do some testing. See if Instagram is going to give you more results or is Facebook. Or you can run them both. You can look at your reports inside the ads manager and see which one did better for you. Mm -hmm. And you're creative. The last thing is you're creative. Your most important thing is what is your ad going to look like? Is it going to be a video, a short form video? I would never recommend a 10 minute video in an ad because people just are not going to watch it. <laughs> mm -hmm. A short form video is something two or three minutes that talks about one subject, one tip, one product, one something, and it doesn't go off into many different directions. Or is it a still image, you know, just a single image ad? Or what I really like, and I think that's really good traction, is carousels. Hmm. Images hooked together that people have to swipe through. And I'll tell you that the videos and the um, carousels do better because the algorithm thinks it's important. You're staying on that ad longer hmm. because you have to swipe through to get the full content, or you have to watch the two or three minute, one or two or three minute video to watch, to get the full content. And that tells the algorithm, oh, this was important. This was exactly what this person wanted to see. Hmm. And so you got to brainstorm and figure out and test and maybe run a couple, start out with a couple, a video ad against a carousel or a still image against a carousel. And then after a week's time, see which one is performing best. Continue with that one. Let the other one go. Just turn it off. You know that you tested. This one worked. This one didn't quite do what I thought I wanted it to do. 15 link clicks as opposed to 200. You know, <laughs> you, you know which one's working. Mm -hmm. and, that, and those are my five secrets. Make sure that you have all of those five things in place. Um, and think about it. You, you can't just jump in and put something up real quick. It takes a little planning. Like most things that are important, take a little planning. You plan in your business. You plan your social media. I do. I, I think I, I think other people do. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but you got to plan your Facebook ads as well. Mm hmm yeah, that uh, that definitely makes a lot of sense. And I like some of those. And I really do think that I mean, Facebook ads and organic advertising are similar in the sense that the primary goal is still to draw someone's attention to what you're posting. So mm -hmm. having the fundamentals of design figured out for your business, like what what looks well and what resonates with your audience, what kind of video topics are they interested in? Once you practice that with organic by just your normal followers, you can see, okay, hey, this one did really well. Well, maybe this would make a good, you know, visibility ad or something like that for my business. So I do think that it's important to kind of solidify a lot of that first. So when someone decides, you know, hey, I've got something that's performing really well, or they want to get started with Facebook ads, they've got all the things in place that you mentioned before mm -hmm. your five secrets. Mm -hmm. What's the first kind of ad they should run? You said you need to kind of start at the top of the funnel. What if are they're brand called? new, yeah, awareness mm -hmm. ads. So this would be um, to get them aware of your business. So it could be a, um, a tip. It could be an invite to the newsletter. If you have a newsletter and you send something out ongoing to your, um, to your list and mm -hmm. you're trying to grow your list, it could be just something simple like that. It could be, it's just awareness. Get them to be aware of you and get them in front of you and build up your page because what I would say is a like campaign. Mm -hmm. Do a like and a engagement campaign where you could build up your page till you get to about 2000 people who like mm -hmm. or follow your page. And then you create a custom audience out of those people. And your next ad goes in front of those people who already know who you are. They've seen your ad before, which was awareness. And now you're moving them into the consideration stage. Mm -hmm. And it, that's how you start easy. And you start with a low, low budget because those awareness ads are not very expensive. You can do them anywhere from three to $5 a day. 
and maybe a little more, six or seven. And it depends on the time of year too. What I learned at Facebook is that the fourth quarter, when everybody's trying to sell all their stuff for the holidays, the rates just skyrocket. They go up about 25%. Oh, so wow. They do. You To get, because Facebook is an, on an auction basis, all mm -hmm. of the ads are on an auction. And to win the auction, one per, part of the auction is budget. So if you're down here at $3 a day, everybody else is coming in at seven, eight, nine, ten dollars a day, you're not going to win the auction. The people with the seven, eight, nine, ten dollar budgets are going to win the auction and you're not going to see any traffic and especially fourth quarter. So I would say start running your ads earlier in the year. Try to get familiar and get your foot in, understand it. And then if you want to move into the fourth quarter, but be prepared to spend a little bit more money just to get the same amount of traction you might have gotten in the spring and summer. Hmm. Okay. So you mentioned that you can make it work on a small budget and for visibility, you only need a couple dollars a day. Mm -hmm. What do you kind of recommend as the minimum though? Cause I know visibility ads are not going to be the only thing that people run. So it's not a case no. of, you know, $5 times 30. So what right. do you recommend as a good starting point for small businesses? Um, a good starting point for, for small businesses is something I like $10 a day can get you really good traffic, but I go a step above that and go to the odd number 11, because you're going to be above everybody who is starting their ads at $10 a day. Oh, so think about those odd numbers and instead of five, maybe seven or, or because everybody starts at $5 a day instead of 10, maybe 11 or 1150 or 12 or, or something that's just a little bit above. Mm -hmm. I've seen that work well, where people just have a little bit more of a budget and they're winning more auctions and getting more results. Hmm. Um, I mean, you can throw $50 a day at ads. Yes. And you can get some good results, but it's not long term. I mean, if you're a small business, you, you can't afford that. If you're mm -hmm. one of the big guys, yeah, they probably spend 50 and $100 and hundreds of dollars a day on ads. Mm -hmm. And that's okay for them. But in order for small businesses to compete, start small and grow, grow, you know, build up, build up. Mm -hmm. So okay. $25 a day is, um, I just ran an ad for $25 a day for a client for a webinar and we got, and we ran it for eight days, 10 days. can't remember. It was just a few weeks ago and we got over 400 clicks. I mean, people were looking at the ads. They signed up for the webinar. It was very successful. And, um, that was people who were in their warm audience. They mm -hmm. already were knew who they were. So this was a new topic for them. They signed up for the webinar and it was, it was a pretty good successful campaign. The webinar is mm -hmm. over, so it stopped. So your, your ads don't have to run all the time continuously. Mm -hmm. You, your awareness campaigns and your engagement campaigns should probably run a little longer. If you're really promoting some sort of an event, you can actually create an event on Facebook. It's easy to boost that event, but you can also turn that event into a regular ad oh. and get in front of the right audience. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's neat. Yeah. And it's like $25 a day seems like a lot, but when you're saying, you know, oh, it was only for eight days, that <laughs> hurts a right. little less when you hear it. <laughs> right. Because you, you have a beginning and an mm -hmm. end. I mean, you don't even have to set your end date in Facebook. You just turn it off when you mm -hmm. want to. There's a way to say, okay, it's going to start this day. It's going to start at this time. It's mm -hmm. going to end at this time. I don't do that often. I just turn it off when I'm done with that ad and move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. But you could do it either way, whatever people are comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And I find that my people are all at different places. They're all at different spots in their business. You know, some are just starting out. Some are kind of been around for four or five years and they're trying to grow and get in front of new people. So that's where Facebook is ideal because mm -hmm. the world is on Facebook. I don't have their statistics, their numbers today, but it's billions of people are on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So you can reach most everybody on Facebook. 
Okay. And I mean, you're right. Everyone's like, oh, no one uses Facebook anymore. I was like, well, they do because, <laughs> because Facebook would not be running and exist still if people were not using it because they own Instagram too. If Instagram was where it was at, then they'd just be all over that and they would cut their losses with Facebook. But right. there's just so much benefit there. There Um, is. so I think one of the big things is, is kind of, how do you know that it's working <laughs> with well, Facebook ads? You've got, you've got some statistics. You've got really good statistics inside the ads manager and you want to look and see if you are getting people on your list, mm -hmm. um, either with a traffic ad Traffic is a good place to start too, because traffic is sending people to a website or a link mm. or a webinar or something. You're, you're sending people to a off Facebook link. And then when they get off Facebook to that link, that link or that page has to do the selling and get them to sign up. So your mm -hmm. ad is great on Facebook, but then that you move them off to your um, opt-in page or your webinar sign up, and that has to do the selling and get them to fork over their email list to attend your free webinar. And then there's a lot of follow-up with that. You know, you've got to follow up and follow up and make sure they come and give them all kinds of great information in between when they sign up and when the webinar is actually going to happen to make sure they show up. Cause I don't even know what those statistics are. A small percentage of people who sign up actually show up for the webinar. Mm. <coughs> mm -hmm. But um, traffic is a good one and, and make sure that wherever you send them is a, is just a stellar page that's going to get them to, do what you want them to do. You have to kind of lead them. You, you lead them off of Facebook to the page. You tell them what you want them to do on the page mm -hmm. and your call to action has to be really strong. Mm -hmm. That makes sense because otherwise you're spending a boatload of money to get people to a page and then they look at it and they're like, Meh, and then they leave. So then, yeah, your budget doesn't go as far that way. <clears throat> That's correct. Okay. You, you've, you've got to get the action wherever you send them to, it's gotta be, um, it's gotta be ideal for that person. That person mm -hmm. has to think, oh my God, this is exactly what I need. Mm -hmm. and, and they'll take the action that you ask them to take. Okay. So I guess kind of a follow-up question is how do you know what piece of it is not working? Like if you have really high numbers, you're spending a lot of money, you're not necessarily getting a lot of webinar registrations, let's say, how do you pinpoint what part in the process is the one that's causing issues for a business owner so that they know what to address? So we optimize then. So we look at our, our audience, we look at and inside the ads manager, it gives you how many people it expects you to reach per day based on what you're spending. So you look at that and you analyze, okay, I was supposed to reach this many people with this audience, and then you tweak your audience. So you might have to do something completely different with your audience. I look at audience and budget, because if the budget is not co competitive, then you're not going to get the results you want. But um, And then there's inside Facebook Ads Manage they give you a ranking, a quality ranking. So it tells you, is your ad above no, above it, no, average? Is it average or is it below average? So I look at the quality rankings too, to get an idea of, should we change up the creative? If the still image isn't doing it, maybe I need to put a video on that page so that mm -hmm. people can hear from me and see me and will then sign up for the webinar or the free gift or whatever it is. Um, so you test, I, 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 it's, there is no set, how do you <laughs> figure it out 100%, you test. Mm -hmm. But when you test, you only change one thing. So you've run it for so many days and you have run it that way. So then when you're going to change something, you change either the call to action or the creative or the audience. One thing, you don't want to change too many things because then you won't be able to judge, well, did this fix it? Mm, okay. 
So at what point in the process or like what numbers would you look at to know, okay, well, the Facebook ads are working really well, but maybe the the change or the testing needs to come on like the landing page or some other part of the process? Um, you can put the pixel on your landing page. And when you go into the ads manager and inside Facebook business suite, you'll see your statistics on how many people landed on that landing page. And so that'll tell you before and after whenever okay. you need the change. It's a, it's a little, it's not complicated. It's basic math, but you just have to figure out, I ran it for this many days and it was this result. I ran it and just keep a Excel spreadsheet. I'd say ran it for this many days. Here's what happened. And this is what I changed. Mm -hmm. And then you might need to keep tweaking it. And the other thing I, I see is when people are promoting a special event, they don't give it long enough time to work. You can't okay. promote in a week's time. You got to mm -hmm. have three or four weeks time to do your Facebook ad promotion. Um, and people don't often understand that or don't think they need to plan that far out. Mm -hmm. But you really do with Facebook ads. You got to plan that far out. So you start giving them um, ideas on what you're going to be presenting or what your, your offer is and you kind of seed them and then you have to like build up the interest and then you have to actually invite them to do whatever you want them to do. And so that takes three or four weeks hmm. really to be a, a good successful campaign in my, in my estimation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you can say the same about organic advertising too. It's like, you don't just be like, tomorrow is a webinar and be like, no, you got to start talking about it a few weeks in advance. You got to share some tidbits of information that pique people's interest and in all of those things. So I think that's why it oftentimes works really well to kind of use the two together. You do your organic content and then you have your Facebook ads because then again, not a Facebook ads expert, but then when someone sees your paid ads, if they go and check your social media profile and all no, makes sense. is paid ads, then they don't see any additional content. Like you need that organic, you need You're that organic absolutely piece right. too. Mm -hmm. And when I talk to people and a client I met with yesterday, I said to her, did you put it on social media? Did you send an email to your list? Mm -hmm. You need, this has to be in front of everybody all the time because mm -hmm. there's a statistic too that says somebody has to see something I thought it was three or four times. I think it's up to seven or eight times before they really will do anything. Mm -hmm. So it's, you've got to be everywhere. Um, ads is part of it. Organic social is definitely part of it. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to email your list so they know what you're up to. Mm -hmm. So they can be there and support you it, so they can hear from you more. Mm -hmm. It's all connected. You know, it's just all connected. And mm -hmm one piece of it might get you a little bit of results, but, but you're not going to get everything that you really could get if you coordinated it and put it all together. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. And I, if for anyone listening, I actually shared, um, and I have a couple episodes about this because I recently started doing some Facebook advertising. Um, I'm going to say myself, but I've actually hired a company to help me. That's, mm -hmm. we won't talk about that right now. Um, but I was, kind of playing around with some of these things. And I test a lot of stuff too that the company doesn't help me with, but right. I really saw a big difference in terms of the reach you can get with Facebook ads, which is great. And I think a lot of businesses test that and they're either not successful and they stop doing it, which we talked about earlier, or they are successful and then that's all they wanna do. But like we just talked about, there's so many other pieces of it. So I recently launched a course for the very first time and I ran mm -hmm. a masterclass to promote it. So I had Facebook ads running to it, which was great. But when I actually finished it and did my debrief after my course launch and I sat down and I actually looked at the numbers of where people came from, yes, I did get a lot of registrations and email list growth from the paid ads, but a lot of the people that actually attended my masterclass came from my organic network. So either Instagram followers that I messaged, people that saw my organic content or emails that I sent. And I ended up, and I mean, I have a pretty small list, new product too. So I ended mm -hmm. up with like 125 people that registered for the masterclass. And I was super happy with that. Those numbers, those were great for me at the stage of business that I'm in. 
-hmm. But a large chunk of that, like I said, I would not have had that many people register if I was just like, oh, Facebook ads is going to do it for me. I'm just going to, you know, go hang out at the beach for the day. (laughs) You're so smart because that's right. You have to do them both in sync. I absolutely agree with you there because anybody who doesn't have a following People are going to enter, people are going to look you up. They're going to, if they see your ad, they're going to look you up and you've got to have, you know, something going on. You can't have a stale Instagram account that has no new content on it. Mm -hmm. And you can't certainly have a stale Facebook page that has no current content on it. Um, And you got to prove that you're a real person that have a, that your course is going to be, you know, exactly what they need. Um, Mm -hmm. You're right. It's, it's all connected. And people sometimes think, yep, I'm just going to do Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. You can't, it's, they'll have some success. They will, because they're going to reach a whole bunch of new people who have never, ever seen them. Mm -hmm. And so they might get some interest, but you, if you coordinate it all and do a little planning, I think you're just going to be way better off and you're going to have some results that you're proud of. Yeah. And this is a little bit more of an advanced question. And I don't know if there's like a statistic for this, but it's something that I've been thinking about. So I thought I'd ask. So I've done this course launch. I plan on relaunching it again in June. A lot Mm -hmm. of the people that registered for the master class, some of them showed up, some of them didn't. Like we talked about, you know, there's a lot that don't. Some just want the replay. Some forget about it entirely. Uh, Or something comes up (laughs) and they can't be there. Yeah. But I wondered if there's like a statistic or some sort of number that you can kind of use as a ballpark when you're planning the next one to think about, okay, well, all of these people saw it the first time, maybe they showed up and didn't purchase, maybe they didn't purchase. They're then seeing all of my messaging again, because they're on my email list, they're following me on social media, hopefully, they'll probably Mm -hmm. see my Facebook ads when I run it the second time, Mm -hmm. to judge what the growth would be in something like that. Because I think in what I'm considering in my business is that Facebook ads are a long-term strategy. So like, I'm going to need to run my course, you know, two, three, four times so that some of those people that registered for my first masterclass might not be ready to purchase until my second or third running of the course. I just wondered if there was like an actual statistic that talks about that. Yeah, I, there probably is, and I'm sure we could Google it, but I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's um, okay. We should. That's very interesting. And I'm glad you're thinking that way. Mm. Um, the, the thing is, I don't know that statistic. Um, people will buy when they're ready to buy, not when you're ready to show them <laughs> your stuff. You know what I mean? True. It could be six months. It, it could be two years. It, mm-hmm. it could be a longer. People will buy when they're ready to buy, when they get to that point where they can't stand it anymore and you've got the solution for them. Mm-hmm. So yes, Facebook is a long-term thing. You've got to keep something in front of them. And that's why I say do those little engagement ads, those little awareness ads in between your big events so that you keep getting new people seeing your stuff. And a lot of people don't get that either, that you need to keep <laughs> something going. The algorithm mm-hmm. likes that. The more activity you get on your engagement ads or your awareness ads or watching your cute little video or mm-hmm. um, the algorithm likes that, gives it more importance. So it's going to show to more people and you're going to just grow your whole business that way. But mm-hmm. it, it's people will buy when they're ready to buy. And, and that that's something I can't predict. I don't know who can, but um, no one. <laughs> that's a very good question to ask. And I like that question. I'm glad you're thinking that way so mm-hmm. that next time you can you can do it, do it a little differently. You have to be unique to these days. You've got to do something different in your, I was just on a summit and what these gals did on the summit was created some follow-up meetings so that the presenters on the summit could really get some benefit out of it, Hmm. Um, which was unique because I had never heard that before. Summits are usually one and done. You're on, you speak, you you tell them about you and your business. You then make your offer. um, And it wasn't, it was just a free offer. It wasn't a free, um, whatever you wanted to give away. 
And then you follow up when they get on your list to get the free um, item that your your hand you're giving mm -hmm. out. But these gals followed up with a meeting with the um, summit presenters. And there's one more. And I don't they didn't commit that it was going to go on forever. But for the first couple of months, there's going to be some follow up so that the presenters of the summit really feel like they're getting more out of it and they're interacting and can help each other too mm -hmm. and become affiliates you know become an affiliate for each other so that you can earn money but you're also helping your audience meet some new new people too that will go real well with your business so you mm -hmm. got to do things just a little different maybe the next time brainstorm about how um i don't know I don't know. I can't think of anything off the top of my mind. Your ad agency should really be able to help you with this. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, they do. I just wanted, you know, a second opinion. And I understand. I understand. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're a different business. We're here on the podcast. You're sharing your wisdom. We talk about you, not them. They're not here. <laughs> yeah, that's good. But but they they might probably because my agency is just a little boutique agency I only work with a few people at one time I don't really have massive amounts of people working for me um I, will I get to that someday maybe if, if you know if I get 15 clients that would be great I'd have teach somebody else how to do it and we can all work to do that but right now I'm I'm just taking on a few clients at a time that I know I can manage and um, meet with them and you know give them their results and it's a lot about testing just test and see what works um and and you'll know your results you can look inside ads manager you can create the reports that you want there is a way to customize your columns and only add in what you want for your reports mm -hmm. and um and you'll know if they did well or if you need to tweak something and I pay attention. This is a this is a tip. Pay attention to frequency mm. because a lot of people don't talk about frequency. Frequency is how many times did that ad get in front of the same people? Okay. If that frequency number gets up to three or four or five or six, you got to change something. You got to change the audience. You got to change the creative so they think so they're seeing something a little different. It's still for you and your business but it's something different. It's not the same ad. People will ignore the same ad if they see it that many times. They That's just true. will. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So you have to pay attention to frequency. That doesn't come right in ads manager without you adding that column. But oh. I always pay attention to frequency. Okay, good to know. Well, you've shared so much incredible information with us. Um, I know you have a giveaway for the I listeners. Do. So if you want to share that now, that would be great. I do. I have a quick little checklist and guide for beginners who are just starting out in Facebook ads. It is um, some, some planning tools inside. There's a budget sheet. There's a sheet with, you know, the five secrets. There's a sheet with don't make these mistakes. Mm, that's <laughs> mistakes an important one. <laughs> mistakes people often make. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, I created a simple little bit.ly link. It's real easy to get. It's just bit, B-I-T dot L-Y slash F-B capital for Facebook dash guide. The G is capital dash 2024. Okay. And for those of you that are like, I'm driving or washing dishes, I promise you I will put it in the show notes so that all you have to do is click on it. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much, Brittany. That You're would be welcome. Fun. You'll get some really good um, information in that. It's, I just called it a checklist and then I looked at it and I said, well, this is more than a checklist. So it's a checklist <laughs> and a guide. There's just, it's not just a checklist. Checklists mm -hmm. are important. But it's it's a guide. It helps you plan your ads and think about what you want to do before you do it. And then um, you can jump in and, and start creating it yourself or you can get some help. Like I said, I can do teach you how to do it. I've got a five week course that teaches you how to do it or I can do it for you. And then we just coordinate when you want to run it and what you want to run and how you want the results to um, to to appear so we can teach you all that 
Amazing. But what else do you need from me? It was mm -hmm. great being your guest. I think Thank that you. ads and social media absolutely go together. Um, it's, it's organic and then it's, you know, grow, grow, grow. And you've got to concentrate on both really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um, I think the only other question that I had for you is for anyone that's listening that wants to learn more, maybe they want to hire you or go through your training. How do they find you? And again, I'll link this in the show notes, but it's desert digital ad group.com. There it's we go. Really Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. It's been great. And I hope that the audience learned just as much as I did. I know this is like we said earlier, a really popular topic that people either um, feel like they're an expert in already, and then they try it and it doesn't work and they get frustrated or they're just like, I don't even know where to start. So I'm just not going to, but it really can make a huge difference in how fast you see that growth. Don't get me wrong as an organic marketer. I love the organic side of things, creating those connections <laughs> in the community. But I'm also a human being that has almost four little ones to feed and I've got to pay my family and the the speed at which Facebook helps me grow my business is definitely not something that I would ever ignore. Very good. You're a smart businesswoman. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so thank you so much for being here and thank you to everyone who's listening and we will see you all again next week on the Go Get Great podcast. Ah. Bye-bye. Thanks, Brittany. Have a good night. <laughs> you too. Thank you so much for tuning in to Go Get Great. I hope you found some useful tips and tricks that can help you make life and business work together. If what I said resonates with you, please share it on social media and don't forget to tag at Brittany Miller Socials so that I can celebrate you for taking those first steps towards achieving greatness. Remember, success doesn't happen overnight. It takes dedication, hard work, and a lot of spirit. So don't be afraid to dream big and go after what you want. Keep striving for greatness. You get closer with every step forward, no matter how small they may seem. Until next time, go get great.